Okay, so in this second video of uh, moving things from Revit to Real, we're going to look at adding in some context to our Revit file. Um, so one of the first things I need to do is, um, now that I have the contours inside of Revit from SketchUp, I also need to bring in the satellite photography into Revit from uh, SketchUp so that I can start to add in that context into my Revit file. So I'm going to bounce back into SketchUp and I'm going to go to Windows, Materials, and I'm going to grab um, this image out of SketchUp. And to do that, I already have it loaded here. What I'm going to do is select the eyedropper tool and then select that image right there. Uh, and that's going to say that's Google Earth Snapshot is the name of it. And I'm going to go to Edit. And then I'm going to use this button, um, Edit Texture Image in External Editor. And so my default image viewer is just Windows Photo Viewer, so it's going to open up there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is right click and say Open with Photoshop. And inside of Photoshop, I'm go going to do a Save As. And you can see this is um, SketchUp's default texture map location. It puts it someplace buried into your temp folders. It's kind of a mess. Um, but just on my desktop, I'm just going to name this Camino Site 1. And say OK. So this is a really low resolution file. This is a 72 dpi file and it's a little over 5 by 3 inches. So if I'm going to use this for print, uh, it's going to be a pixelated mess. So if I need something higher resolution, I can always go back to some satellite imagery and bring in high resolution images and overlay them on this file and basically up res the image, uh, maintaining the, the correct proportions. Um, for the work that I'm doing with this, uh, this low res version probably will be just fine. So I'm going to go bounce back into Revit. I'm going to, going to go to my site view and I'm going to use insert image to select Camino site 1. And I'm going to place that image right up here. So the first thing you'll notice is that the topography is occluding my view to, this, to the image. And that is simply because uh, one is over the top of the other. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is set my view to wireframe. So I can now see the topography as well as the site, uh, the satellite imagery. And I'm going to put the point of the top left edge of my image at the top left of my topography. I'm going to stretch this image out. And as mentioned before, there's sort of this weird rotation thing that happens from SketchUp to Revit. I'm not exactly sure why, but something's off somewhere. It's always happened to me. Um, so what I want to do next is simply rotate those two things together. So I'm going to select the Rotate command, and I'm going to drag that rotation point, or the center of the rotation, again to the top left. And I'm going to pick the top edge of my image. And again, the snapping on Revit can be a little bit weird. So it's, it's not wanting to, to go anywhere close to this edge. So I'm just going to type in SO, which is the shortcut for snap off. And do a basic alignment like that. Um, this, is, this is one of those horseshoes and hand grenades thing uh, where close is good enough. Um, again, if we're off by inches on something that is conceptual modeling or early design development, it, it will be okay. Uh, and again, if we're off by inches in something that is 1,500 feet by uh, 920 feet, again, it's not really a terrible situation. If I was using this for construction documentation, I would absolutely want survey data and have an entire survey crew out. So this is, this is not buildable information. Uh, but it's certainly good enough for design development information. So moving from this, um, the next thing I'm going to do is begin adding context. I want to start with roads and then we'll move into buildings next. So to add in a road, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my massing and site tools and I'm going to use subregion. So using the subregion tool, I can basically trace the outer edge of the roads And I always go all the way off of the topography. Just seems to work the best for me on this type of stuff. So I'm going to trim edge to edge. And I'm basically just drawing out the 
the area of that road and I can hit OK. And so what that essentially gives me is two pieces of um, topography to work with or two areas to put materials on. So if I switch this back to my 3D view and I'm going to switch this to consistent colors, you can see where that roadway is. And what I need to start doing is applying some different materials to that. So I'm going to select my basic contour model here and I went to my materials category that was a little bit fast. I'm going to select this and under my properties, material, I'm going to select that and I want to go down here to my miscellaneous, miscellaneous materials and we are going to add in grass. So I'm just going to double click on that, grass, and then I want a sort of light green color, not, not anything too terribly obnoxious, but something that I can see that that is primarily ground cover. And I'm going to say OK and OK. And so you can see now I have grass and this uh, needs to be asphalt. So again, I'm going to go material by category. I'm going to come down to my mis miscellaneous folder under AEC materials and asphalt. Again, a double click. I'm perfectly happy with that gray color and we'll start building up the roads. Now I'm going to save you the trouble of watching me build all the roads in there. I can tell you it only takes a few minutes but it's longer than you probably want to watch. So let's look at a building next. There's a lot of different ways to, to begin adding in building context. Typically for me, and I'm a little bit of a slop artist with this stuff, so I apologize for that. I might be setting a bad example. But typically for me, I'm going to just use uh, the massing tools. So I'm going to go to Architecture, Component, Model in Place. And I'm just going to use a generic model. And I'm going to call this Context Massing 1. Extrusion. And then what I'm going to do is really quickly just trace the edge of starting just with this building right here of that piece. Now, I marry this with, I don't just work sort of in isolation. I'll pull up Google Maps and Street View so that I can have uh, something to reference, a little bit higher resolution image to reference in terms of what these buildings are doing with the satellite. And then I'll use Street View to get a good guesstimate on the heights of the building. And again, working with basic context, I feel like, you know, if I'm within a foot or two of the height, then I am working uh, just fine. So, you know, this is basically a one foot tall um, representation of this building, so I know that's not correct, but what I can do is then come in and stretch that up. I know just from remembering this thing, this building was about 22 feet tall. So I'm going to hit apply to that, and I want to make sure that it is actually starting just underneath the topography. So it looks like I need to pull this down to about a minus two to make sure that I'm just underneath the topography. And so that process begins to add in both the roadways um, and the different alleys in this location as well as the site modeling context. So on video three we'll actually start with all of those things in place and we'll begin looking at pushing these files out to the CNC router.